This is the day of tryouts for our annual swimming meet at the Lawndale Community Club. And it's a special day for one of the boys because he's proving something that happens all the time. He's proving that you can overcome a handicap so completely that you climb right to the top. Oh, Bill hasn't won yet, but he has qualified to swim in the finals. So it is a special day for him. It's rather a special day for me, too. You see, I've been coaching Bill, and I feel I had a part in making him one of our best swimmers. But I said something about a handicap, didn't I? Well, there was a time when Bill was severely handicapped, as far as swimming goes. He used to visit the pool once in a while, but it was the same story every time. He really wanted to learn to swim. But one thing was certain. He'd never learn that way. Yes, Bill had a handicap. That handicap was fear. At first, Bill's friends used to ask him to join in the fun. Hey, Bill, come on in. But no, it was no use. They forgot Bill was there. But Bill couldn't forget himself. He kept thinking and worrying. I think I'm a coward, do they? Well, maybe I am. If only I weren't so afraid. I could learn to swim. I could have fun like that. Say if you fall off a horse, you should get right back on as soon as you can, so you won't be afraid of horses. I guess she's not going to let this thing worry her. Well, I'll never get over being afraid in the water, no matter how often I get in the pool. What's the use? <laughs> Just wasting my time trying to swim. I'll never learn. I'll never get over being afraid. <laughs> giving up? Yeah, giving up, that's right. You're Bill Brent, aren't you? My name's Barker. I'm the swimming instructor around here. I've um, noticed you out there. You really want to swim, don't you? Oh, it's no use, Mr. Barker. I'm afraid. I'm a coward. You're the first coward I've ever known that had courage enough to admit it. Huh? Look, I'll, I'll agree you're afraid of the water. But does that make you a coward? Most people are afraid of something. Most folks are afraid of wild animals. A lot of people are afraid of speeding cars. I am. I always get out of the way when I see one coming toward me. 
I guess that makes me a coward, too. That's different. That makes sense. But being afraid of water, it's silly. It's easy to say a fear is silly, but that doesn't necessarily help. You know, you're letting yourself get in the habit of being afraid. In the habit? Yes. Hey, maybe you know my kid sister. She used to be afraid of dogs. She's getting over it now, but once it was quite serious. We don't really know how that fear started. But it might well have happened this way. When my sister was very small, the people next door had a large dog. He was a rough, noisy dog, too. Kept fenced in the yard all the time. Perhaps sometime in her play, Sis came up quite close to the fence. When the dog came running toward her, she was naturally startled. And, well, if that happened several times, you can see how she might have gotten the habit of being afraid of dogs. And that habit stayed with her long after she forgot all about the first dog that frightened her. You said she was getting over it now. How did she do that? How did she know? Well, she knew it was an unreasonable fear. And she wanted to overcome it. So she and I worked together. We figured she should know dogs. We felt she should make friends with dogs. It wasn't easy for her. We took it very slow. My knowing that a dog wouldn't hurt her wasn't enough. She had to know. She had to have experience in handling dogs, caring for them. There was a cute little puppy. How could she be afraid of him? How could she help loving the little fellow? Who wouldn't come closer to a big dog for a chance to play with a puppy a little longer? Who could remain afraid of the pup's mother very long? Certainly not my sister. It takes experience, knowledge, determination, and insight to overcome fears that are not rational. But it can be done. Maybe some people can do it, but I'm too much of a coward. If you keep calling yourself a coward, you're apt to start acting like one. Hey, didn't I see your, uh, your picture in the paper the other day? Something about a bicycle ordinance, wasn't it? Yes, uh, I just happen to have a copy right here. <laughs> One copy. Oh, yes, here we are. Mm. You deserve to be proud of yourself. Student defends bicycle ordinance. The uh, paper doesn't give many details. Tell me about this. Well, you know about the new ordinance to keep bicycles off the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It's really an important safety measure. But a lot of the kids didn't like it, and they held this protest meeting. Some of us thought it was a good ordinance, and I went to the meeting and said so. It seems to me, in the interest of safety, we ought to accept this rule. The least we can do is give it a fair trial. Ah, pipe down. Do you have a bike to go? Yes, I have a bike. But when I'm walking on a sidewalk, I like to feel safe. So I'm willing to ride my bike in the street. Yeah, but what about on the street? Well, Holly, right? I don't think there's a difference. Good going, Bill. You told him. Do you agree with me? Sure. Oh, well, get up and say so. Uh, no. Go ahead. No. Come on. I tried to get Ed to speak up, but he wouldn't. And the kids are still all steamed up. I don't know. The courage of your convictions. Huh? About Ed. You said he wouldn't speak up even though he agreed with you. Would you say he was afraid? Afraid? Well, I guess. But that can't be. Ed helped Janet today, when she stumbled into the water. He's no coward. The other day, you stood up for what you thought right, against opposition. So you're no coward. You showed what we call moral courage. Well, maybe. Maybe I'm just a part-time coward in the water. That's where I'd like to help. You want to learn how to swim. 
Well, I... Come on, then. Let's get started. That day, Bill started overcoming his fear. He was in the habit of being afraid. So the important thing was to get him in the habit of not being afraid. Bill learned gradually, over a period of several weeks, some of the skills he would need for swimming. As he became more skillful in the water, he also became more confident. He was ready to try actions that would have frightened him before, because now he knew he could always right himself in the water, and so needn't fear drowning. As he learned more, Bill gradually eased into deeper water. If he could swim across the shallow end of the pool, he could swim across the deep end. And of course, the better he could swim, the less Bill feared the water. And he overcame his habit of fear. He became confident. And so today is a special day for Bill. He did overcome his handicap, and very well, too. Whether or not he wins in the swimming meet, he has proved to himself and to others that he is not a coward. Well, we all have little fears which hamper us. We should take a tip from Bill. Our lives can be richer, happier, if we overcome our fears. Thank you.